Okay, I'll give it just a, a minute and then we can get started. Welcome to everyone joining us. We're going to get started in just another minute. Actually, since it's being recorded, I think I'll just go ahead and, and start. <laughs> okay, well, hello and welcome to our panel, Indigeneity Beyond Borders, with facilitators Dr. Tom and Tori Melendez. My name is Lindsay. I'm a third year student here at Sonoma State studying sociology, and I will be the host of this presentation. Our facilitator, Shannon, is a senior and will graduate with her BA in psychology this May. Shannon will enforce our ground rules to keep the Zoom space safe for all in attendance today. And I'm going to hand it over to Shannon, and she's going to go over the ground rules for us. Thank you, Lindsay. Hi, everybody, and welcome. Um, so yeah, we, if you look at the panel, the little pane of Caitlin Henry, she has the ground rules in the screen there. I will also post them in the chat so people know, and our goal today is to keep this space safe for everybody attending and respectful and thank you and welcome to Indigeneity Beyond Borders. Thank you, Shannon. I'd like to begin with a land acknowledgement. Long before California, Sonoma County, and Sonoma State University, the, the land around us was inhabited by indigenous peoples collectively known as the Coast Miwok and Southern Pomo. Now they are formally recognized as the Federated Indians of Greaton Rancheria and shared by Greg Saris, who holds the Greaton Rancheria Endowed Chair at Sonoma State University. Sonoma State acknowledges in gratitude the Rancheria's ancestors for their stewardship of the land and all of its resources, and thank the current membership for their partnership in a number of educational initiatives, including the Federated Indians of Greaton Rancheria Learning Center at the Fairfield Osborne Preserve located on Sonoma Mountain. As Professor Saris writes in his 2017 book, How a Mountain Was Made, it is said that Coyote was sitting atop Sonoma Mountain when he decided to create the world and people, but that is part of the big story of the mountain. We are now all part of the big story of the mountain and our stewardship of its resources, including our county and our university, is an ongoing vital responsibility we recognize and gladly accept. And now I am pleased to introduce our panel starting, or well, our panel facilitators, starting with Dr. Erica Tom. Dr. Erica Tom is a director of Native American Studies and a lecturer in American Multicultural Studies and the Hutchins School of Liberal Studies. She is the faculty lead for the Humanities Acad Academic Component for the Summer Bridge Program at Sonoma State and the faculty advisor for the Equestrian Team and the Multicultural Student League. Dr. Tom's current research focuses on environmental justice, trauma and resilience in communities of color. Beyond the university, she runs Equisense, where she facilitates trauma-informed equine experiential learning experiences for foster children and first responders. And next we have Tori Melendez. Tori Melendez is the vice president of the club Native American Progressive Students, as well as a Native American student mentor here on campus. She identifies as Native Hawaiian, as well as Filipino and Chinese. She is a senior majoring in communication and media studies with a passion for story storytelling. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Um, and I will just say a couple of words um, before um, 
before we hand it over um, for Tori to take this lead. Um, I just wanna say thank you so much to um, Dr. Henry and um, to um, Lindsay and, um, and to Shannon and to everyone who's really been um, just incredible in putting together such engaging programming for this week and in including um, so many different um, people, organizations, um, communities in this. Um, as you said in your introduction, I'm the director of Native American Studies, and I'm very proud to um, be working with my colleague, Amel Miner, who is the Native American Initiative representative, um, together um, supported by Dr. Jolina Griffin-Desta and Dr. Sakaki through the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion um, Office. Um, we have been moving forward this year um, with um, supporting our Native American Indigenous students um, with having our first ever full month of programming for Native American Heritage Month, um, for growing our culturally specific programming in our Summer Bridge um, program for first generation and historically low income students, um, to name just a few of the things that um, I've been very lucky to be a part of. Um, but I think the thing I feel most proud of in this moment is actually um, getting to introduce um, again, because she deserves a second introduction, is our Native American um, student mentor, Tori Melendez, who has um, been critical in these things that I just mentioned. Um, so jumped on board with us um, last summer, just like dove in. Um, who um, co-created and co-facilitated and facilitated and led various programming in Native American Heritage Month. Before that, um, a panel on queer, um, on queerness and sexuality in indigenous communities. Um, and most recently has come and been a guest speaker in classes around multicultural uh, communication. So just to name of the few things that Tori is doing along with really bolstering our uh, Native American Progressive Student Club. Um, so we are really, um, we're very lucky to have Tori who will be leaving us soon, um, graduating. Um, so congratulations to her. Um, but I just want to share a few of those things that are happening here at Sonoma State. And if you are a Native American or indigenous student or an ally and you'd like to learn more about our reading group, um, really anything, um, I will put my information in the chat just to um, be a re resource for anyone who'd like to follow up on that. And um, so with, with all of that, um, I am glad to hand it over to Tori. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for that, um, Erica. I really appreciate you and everything you do and all um, your work and energy and effort, because um, obviously, like, cultural work is a lot of time and energy. And also for everyone um, who put Social Justice Week together, I'm really excited to be here with all of you and get the opportunity to talk about everything. Um, so like I said, my name is Tori. Um, I'm a communications major, and this is due to my love of creating and telling stories. And I think you can see that in the work I've done through this role, but also as a student and as a person. Um, I am Native Hawaiian, Filipino, and Chinese. I transferred here from the JC and it has been uplifting to be involved in this work here at Sonoma State University. I think so often for Native people, the invisibility is the racism. And so being able to be seen and share experiences is essential, hence this panel. Um, the title Indigeneity Beyond Borders comes from the recognition of the various indigenous groups in North America. Um, indigenous peoples have existed outside the, outside the lines that have been drawn for us. Um, so through this panel, we want to explore our indigeneity in the context of college America and just what that looks like as an individual because um, being indigenous looks so different um, for everyone. And these roots shape us and change the ways we interact with our environment. And I also want to thank everyone for making the commitment to show up and listen. I know how challenging it is to be in a virtual environment and how draining screen time can be. And so I'm so honored you chose to spend it here with us. And so I invite you to share things that may resonate with you or any questions and comments you have if you feel so inspired, but also your presence is enough. Um, so thank you again. And so basically this conversation is gonna span from identity, culture and tradition, college and community. And there's just truly so much to talk about. Um, so I'm not sure if we're gonna get to all of the questions, but um, I'd like to. So then if the panelists wanna introduce themselves, um, go for it. <laughs> Mm 
I guess I'll start. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Alvin Rosa Figueroa. Uh, my ethnicity is Salvadorian. I was born here, um, well, not here specifically, but in Los Angeles, California, where I grew up, um, and then later moved to Riverside, where I spent much of, much of my childhood and later adult life. Um, and so I am a first year graduate student in the cultural resource management program at Sonoma State University. Uh, I have a background doing archeology, span working with indigenous uh, groups in Southern California. So such as Cahuilla, Serrano, um, and some of the Kirk tribes um, further out east on the border of California and um, Arizona. So yeah, I mean, that's just sort of my background um, where I'm taking this a step further with the program is uh, applying um, potentially ethnographics narratives of how people perceive the past and looking at submerged landscapes um, and over time in history, um, in, in the Earth's history as you would. So looking at changes in landscapes and so on. That's where I find myself currently, and I um, look forward to, you know, talk more about different things with y'all. Thank you, Alvin. Welcome. Uh, and I guess I'm on the other student panelists. Uh, so my name is Juan Arturo Garcia Rodriguez. I go by Arturo. Um, I was born in Mexico, and I came to the States when I was four. Uh, so I'm labeled as undocumented. Um, I guess that's been not really an issue growing up. It became an issue now in college. Um, and then I'm also a transfer student. Uh, so I got involved through the NAPS program just because uh, I've been always trying to connect through my indigeneity uh, past lately. Um, and I think especially this group uh, just managed to uh, embrace my culture just because it's not really spoken upon. Um, and I just like uh, the support I've been getting. Um, I'm now a, uh, a candidate to get my master's. So um, I'm happy with all the support I've been getting through SSU. So thank you. Thank you, Arturo. Welcome. Hello, um, everybody. Sorry for my tardiness. Um, but yeah, my name is Tiffany Lopez. This is, um, I'm a transfer student at Sonoma State. Um, and this is my first year as a junior here. Um, so I just know everyone on Zoom. That's how I know Sonoma, but everyone's been great. Um, so I'm Mexican American and I have Yaqui um, heritage. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm involved in the Native American Studies program. I performed um, a traditional dance for Native American Heritage Month. And um, through dance and through um, education, I'm uncovering more of my indigeneity and adding that to my catalog of life. So I'm glad to be here. And um, yeah, nice to see all these faces. <laughs> Hello. Thank you, Tiffany. Welcome. So thank you all for introducing yourselves. Um, so let's get started. The first question um, is about identity, of course. So I, I want to ask, what does your native and ident or indigenous identity mean to you? Um, and whatever that looks like. Yeah, so um, that's a really good question. It's actually, you know, ever evolving. Um, I don't think that there's like, um, one type of, of, of a person being indigenous. I think it's, it's so blended and I think the more um, people accept that, especially my people, Mexican Americans, um, just accept it, like accept yourself for where you are and, and go forward and learn your process. Um, I, anytime, anytime I try to um, learn and to, and to hear ancestors and that I believe um, the spirit definitely connects us. And if you have, you know, any spiritual inclination or if you feel a love for Pachamama, Mother Earth, I think that grounds us all. And I think that's one of the biggest talking points that I have in connecting um, indigenous and non-indigenous people together um, for, our, for our policies and for social change. Yeah, I'd like to second what Tiffany was saying where, um, yeah, it's about building a connection 
um, that's what identity means to me, even if it's um, reading it piecemeal, um, because such uh, a lot of Salvadoran culture is very piecemeal. Um, it's been almost eradicated, if you would, in, in the sort of literal sense. And so it's only a select few of people that actually remember their tribal uh, groups, their language, um, who they are as people in the modern world. And so for me specifically, I look to the foods, the names of places and sort of reiterate who I am as a person. And I mean, it's not just that, and it's a reinforcement of acknowledging the different landscapes and the different indigenous groups in, in, in different communities around the world. So I think um, coming into contact, that reinforces the identity factor for me personally. Um, for me, uh, there's this saying, saying, uh, la cultura cura, uh, the culture cures. Uh, for me, it's been, uh, I feel like every day I spend a little bit of time kind of learning my culture. Uh, yesterday, I had the opportunity to meet an elder from um, Maestro Mancin, I think, and he was kind of going over the um, tonal, so the Aztec calendar, and just kind of representing how how it is, and I we don't really hear about that. So, um, kind of knowing that we are like we're kind of over. We're just come as what I'm trying to say is that uh, we're kind of lost, and we're kind of trying to re return to our culture in a way. So it's been hard for a lot of us, um, especially some of us, kind of lost connection to our culture. So. Uh, anytime we kind of see just any like some I've been getting into my culture just by listening to music uh, a lot of artists just kind of tell their their story and that's how I've been kind of learning more about myself just kind of just because uh, I can't find a lot of information about my culture and literature so music for me is a way of of healing Thank you all. I really appreciate all of your responses and perspectives. Um, and it kind of leads into my um, next question with the ways you've touched on how you connected with your indigenous roots. Um, so how do you honor your indigeneity and how do you honor your ancestors? Um, and this is kind of a big question, but we have a whole panel, so go for it. Sure, I can take the lead on this one. Um, for me, the way I connected was actually doing pilgrimages, um, just being aware of uh, where uh, past Native Americans um, did activities, um, for instance, like lakes around lake areas. I grew up in Lake, um, in, in Marina Valley, there was a Lake Paris. And so not knowing that there were bedrock mortars and all this um, interesting archeological sort of features around the lake, um, my brother, sisters, and I would kind of be always curious about the environment. And so that's what kind of connected us into slowly starting finding like, oh, this is, this is more than just an area. This is like where people are living. And so that kind of triggers a lot of things of like um, the foods that we eat, what's accessible in our local area. And so this, to me, that started clicking as I got older and I'm like, okay, so doing pilgrimages to not just local areas, but also having gone and visited um, other areas in Mexico, Guatemala, and Belize. And so looking at like the, the level of, of uh, culture, society, and the complexity that once was there, it kind of, for me, like the, the ancestors and the spirits spoke to me in that sense of like, okay, well, this is all here for you to take it in and absorb and think about um, where people are now on the landscape, no matter where and how far one is. And so that to me, that's how I have sort of began this journey of connecting and identifying myself as more um, of this like, ind indigenous perspective. Yeah. Yeah, um, I guess just to reiterate, you know, what Alvin said, I mean, reclaiming my identity and, and things like that. I think, first of all, and to honor my ancestors, I have to tell myself that I am whole and I am worthy and I am indigenous just because I don't know it or I don't know all of the language or I haven't really visited some of the places um, that, you know, that they've made me and they brought me to this consciousness of even learning. So I do have to honor that person foremost. And, and, 
again, I guess just to reiterate um, the the connection with the land, I think it starts there a lot. And that's that's really my work when it comes to like environmental justice. And that really brings me home. And I definitely find, like I said, like that connects with people. But other than that, honestly, like on social media and in Juan knows, like there's great people, there's there's um, there's great um, indigenous influencers that are on social media, like sharing the language and sharing the stories and and it's a great way to be connected. And so I've learned so much through them. Okay. Thanks. Uh, for me, it's kind of embracing who I am. Um, recently, I've just been using my middle name um, just because I've always been embarrassed of it or never really liked using it. Uh, but that was the person who passed away the day of my birth. Um, and I feel like me honoring his name uh, is kind of a way just kind of um, in a way, one, one thing I'd learned from yesterday's lesson was that uh, our kind of our spirits live on and that we are kind of just borrowed time. So um, I honor Arturo uh, who passed away the day of my birth by honoring his name that I was kind of given. So, um, and then last, last year due to COVID, um, I lost my, not my, so I have a grand, grandfather uh, and I never met him, but he passed, he passed away when my mom was young. Um, but he has a brother and I've never met him. Uh, but last year, uh, my mom was FaceTiming him and I had a conversation with him and I just asked him just like, when did you start growing your, your facial hair? And they're like, oh, my late, your late twenties. Um, and then I was like, oh, and then he was like, oh, you look like my brother, um, Pedro. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. That, that was kind of like. I've never met him and I, I have like a picture of him and my ofrenda. So like he's someone I constantly like just talk for guidance. Um, and about like a week later, um, my grand uncle, I guess, uh, he passed away. So that was the only conversation um, I ever had with um, him. So it's kind of like uh, for me, embracing my culture is just kind of embracing who I am. Um, this is kind of, I can't really change then I can, but um, I don't want to change my name. I, it's, I've been recently just kind of now like accepting this is this is who I am. Um, I don't really like the, like my last names just because um, of the history it comes from, but uh, each name of mine, you know, comes from someone else. My grand, my great, my grandpa is named Juan. Arturo is someone who passed away on the day of my birth. Garcia is my dad's last name. Rodriguez is my mom's last name. So. Um, I honor my name by honoring everyone who's who's lived and lives. So I just kind of, um, I am them and they are me. So that is all. Yeah, I'd like to pick up where you uh, left off on that, Juan, because I too negated my my second last name for the longest time up until I was an adult. <laughs> I was just like, to, when I was like 25, I'm, I'm 32 now. But um, yeah, I... I never thought about it that way until about 25 where it's like oh yeah this, these are my my bloodline and my people who have migrated here or you know done all kinds of things and one of those things how i honored um and, and consider how i honored now is basically through growing plants because i grew up with stories of my great grandma um talking to her on the phone and how she tended to the coffee uh, plants and the mango trees and um, dif different types of plants that she had. And so um, to me, remembering those stories is a way to honor them. Um, and it's, it's something that I think about anytime that I go out and touch a plant or something. I think all of that was really beautiful and I appreciate all of you for sharing such personal stories. Um, I want to touch on this too because um, I'm a panelist and an all-powerful facilitator um, but I always think it's so I always think it's so special to talk about ancestors because obviously right like as indigenous people it's really easy to feel disconnected and um, but I think about like someone said that even if you don't necessarily remember the stories. It's like your ancestors live in you, like you have their eyes, you have their nose, like their blood is running through you, you have their bones. 
Um, and then there's also this Native American idea, and I'm sorry I can't attribute it to a specific group, but I saw it on social media where it's like you heal seven generations back and you can heal seven generations forward. And I just thought that was so beautiful that like my ancestors energy is in me and then my future, like my future generations um, energy is in me right now, you know, and so I think remembering that is so so such an honor to me and then I always attribute like this is like I'm a first generation college student and um and I and I think of course I've worked hard and I've made sacrifices to make that happen and I'm not taking away from that but I just know so much of it is because my like generations of hard work and so I honor my grandparents I honor my parents for breaking generational cycles for me so that I could be in a space here with you um to talk about it you know because sometimes I talk to my parents about cultural ideas and like things we like things we've talked about in cultural spaces and also just like essays I've written or something and my parents are like we know we just weren't able to write that essay on it you know and so I just always do, am reminded of what a privilege it is to be here and to be able to speak on this um and so I I feel and that's the work of generations of my ancestors um and they live in me and so I really appreciate everything you guys have said because it really resonates with me. Um, so transitioning from our individual identities into community, um, what does community mean to you? And what do you lean on as you navigate um, spaces that might be different from like your traditional cultural values? Okay, I love that question. Um, and so I live in the Bay Area. And so um, historically, um, like pre colonial times, the Bay Area has been like the most diverse um, when it comes to native population outside of Mexico City. And so community is knowing like my area. And this area has always thrived in the the different cultures and sharing thereof. And so as an indigenous person, I look for the community to be broadened and to uh, for us to share. And I think that's one of the most beautiful parts of the community. Um, I'm a dancer and that's how I share my stories. And I don't just do one type of dance. And so, and I didn't create it. So I have to borrow and, and give, give acknowledgement to them. And so I think that's an example of, of community and sharing stories, but also acknowledging where we get, um, where we get our, um, our ideas and, and, and our styles and, you know, well, from each other. So I think that answered us a little bit, sorry. Yeah, that's a good, great question. Um, community is basically this, <laughs> a reforming of, uh, of, a, of a different group of people with multiple perspectives uh, to talk about different experiences and that's community to me. Um, my family, has always been um, just six people, which is my mom, my dad, and my brother, and my two sisters. And so we've always kind of had a very small family, but outside of that, we grew up with um, building relationships with other people. And so having like a network of people to consider as family over time. And, you know, people come and go as regular family does, you know, and so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting way of um, the way that I was kind of raised and um, the way I, I look at things now. And yeah, communities just reaching out to people um, and talking about ideas or help, you know, help um, whether it's physically, um, you know, getting better at something or just mentally, you know, reaching out to people, having that network. I think it's a, it's a big thing. It's, it's, you know. Uh, so community, um, so in, in Nahuatl is uh, Kapuli. Um, so I guess my Kapuli is just giving back. Um, I think for me, my community started with uh, the Legacy Youth Project. Uh, it is a program based on for the youth labeled at Promise uh, in Napa. Uh, and they kind of taught me what community is and just kind of helping the ones that don't really have a voice. Um, I feel like all of us at one point, especially being youth and a uh, person of color, uh, we don't know who we are or we just put in situations that we can't speak. Uh, and I think for me, now that I'm a little older, uh, I can go back and um, even though I feel like I'm, I'm 
in a way leaving my community um, for my next point in life. Um, I know that like I have to leave in order to uh, come back and support my community a lot a little better, knowing that like I have to sacrifice and and leave them. Um, so again, like we were talking about, so I, I'm I'm an educator, so I've been in the school system for a while now. Uh, so for me being in there, being present, being a male educator, uh, I kind of just shown like, okay, you know, um, it's different reputation just so I can, ch I can show them the students that like, I know what you're going through. Your parents are probably working three jobs. No wonder you, you're, you're tired. You're probably working too. So I know where they're coming from. And also knowing that like, um, I can also reach out to other people. So, um, now that I'm going to grad school, I, I go reach out to my elders and be like, I need help. Um, I can't I can't do this anymore. And knowing that um, once I complete that is to give it forward to the generation that comes from, from us and they can also go to college if they choose to. Uh, so I think that's what community is, is uh, just being a helping hand, um, supporting the ones that need the help the most. Yeah, it's interesting looking at it like um, how far some of us go, like distance, like physical distance, but we always still retain some aspect of like bringing back some aspect of knowledge and sharing that with the core group of people that we are kind of in the sort of like community, constant communication with. So I think it's interesting. Just real quick, um, I, I love what you said, Juan, and and just want to touch on the um, the servitude aspect that I see a lot in like in my community, and and it definitely um, in every situation you can be in, if if you put yourself at like a servitude, give yourself a servitude mindset, I think you can you can work for not just yourself but for the community and, and the betterment thereof. And it just reminded me of what my grandma would tell me of just having that mindset and just not being like a servant to everyone, like you know, but but. You yeah, to be a servant to the world, to be to be a steward of your land, and and making and continuing that mindset. Like Juan's an educator, and he, his new community, he's still bringing that that um, you know that servitude spirit, and and I find that very important to to continue after our careers, and and whatnot. So yeah, thanks for sharing. Thank you. You all kind of touched on this idea of like what we get from the community, but also what we give to the community. And so um, that kind of transitions into like this other question of how have um, political events and the current, like the current race relation situation in America, like how do you think that's shaped your identity um, or a commitment to community in the last year? Yeah, for me, the way it's shaped it is um, it's more reflective now. Um, if we weren't already reflective in the age of COVID, we've had a lot of time to really think of how we interact with one another. Um, politically, it's just opened a lot of, um, or not so sort of uh, reawoken, but like sort of reinforces the idea that we have to be better humans um, to one another, no matter who we are as people. Um, and then that leads into sort of um, to things that are happening currently with um, sort of having our, our first secretary of interior is Native American. Um, so looking at those sort of transitions of people being identified now as stewards, as, as Tiffany was saying, like people are becoming stewards of um, Native and cultural identities and things are shifting. Um, and so for my type of work, since I'm an archeologist who works for the state politically, there have been a lot of changes, and one of which is sort of the sort of repatriation of artifacts to Native Indigenous peoples. And so we're starting to see that as a, a super acknowledgement of for how tribe, tribes um, function, how um, tribes are being acknowledged um, through the process of lobbying, through constant um, 
um, organization by small groups of people um, and you know, even some of the re unrecognized tribal groups coming together to band together with other unrecognized tribes to form these bigger organizations to go to bat for their worth for what they really should be acknowledged for and included into these things. So that for me has the political uh, scheme of like the Black Lives Matter and sort of how different identities are sort of wanting to be better treated, recognized, humanized. I think that's the sort of um, the way things are going and that's really affecting positively uh, my work because I could speak to people who don't understand and uh, I could basically communicate any um, tribal concerns and be a mediator there um, when things are being ignored and I can say something because I have the authority to do it. I'm in a position to do it. So having that power, I think it's super important and something that is giving back, not just to tribals, but uh, tribal groups, but also just myself is learning the process of negotiation with people who don't typically want to understand or know how to understand. So in that sense, I'm, in, I'm put in an educational like sort of mindset where it's like I have to be an educator too as a profession. No. I'll go ahead, Juan. Okay. Uh, for me, um, with everything going on, um, I'm, I'm at a state where um, I don't know how to control my emotions just because I feel like, especially being on my, we're not really minority, we just been labeled as that. Um, you can't be a minority in your own land. Um, and especially you can't, we all live under this in the same planet with same sun same water and for me that's just the thing i don't understand is um why do we treat people differently um i think it's just i've, I've started to come to the realization that um, with all those events that you know those people could be you know people i know um especially the ones who are like younger than me it kind of hurts the fact that like they haven't even lived their whole life and i haven't lived out mine so the fact that you know their, their their lives have been stolen. Um, for me, it just gets me mad just because uh, there's been history that's not been told. And for me, that's the issue. Um, so we, at least in the Bay Area, we stopped calling it Columbus Day and it's Independence Day. But uh, I feel like we can't move forward into, um, we have the capital that's named, you know, the District of Columbia, and that's named after Columbus. So uh, for me, being an educator just feels like uh, being in the land, you know, the United States of America, named after, you know, Columbus. For me, it's just, you know, I walk, uh, just every day I just go on, just, you know, knowing that um, there's a few of us that know uh, know this. And then it just, for me, it brings me pain just because there's not a lot of people talking about it. And um, I've, that's just something I wish would be changed. Um, if we can change it in certain states and some states recognize it, um, just recognize it as a country. And I feel like with that, um, we start bringing, you know, ethnic studies into, you know, I, I know that's a change in the university level, but uh, bringing it into the elementary school level, just so if the youth at a young age start learning, everybody's different, uh, not just their local community, but because um, I can't, my community is just mostly just, uh, brown and white folks. So I already have a bias going into a different uh, different community. So it's just kind of ex teaching a little bit of everybody. So we all know that we're all, we're all equal. We're all the same. Yeah, um, you know, this past year has been an interesting one. Um, these convert, I mean, this stuff didn't start happening last year. You know, it, it's been going on for for decades and hundreds of years, actually. And so, and so for me, I mean, to just a little bit. Like, I I'm the only. I have seven brothers. I'm the only girl in a big Mexican family. And so, in in our communities, you know, we have to acknowledge racism in our communities. You know, and so this has been um, an experience where I can like people are interested in hearing what I have to say now. And I think in the family too, they're kind of curious. And so this has just been, you know, just a launching pad for me to, to just discuss these things and to, to 
to do my education and look at the data so I can come with real information that like that will hit people's hearts, you know, because um, yeah, like th there is a separation within the black and brown community, I have to say. And and I think it's our part to 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 make to make those connections. Um, same with the indigenous communities of bringing us all together. And you know, being being a female and, and identifying that way, you know, we're all under the same in, in the, the same boat here of, of trying to, to be equal and, and just to be seen and, and to be heard and to gain access and equity. And so through that, I just I look at the data and and I try to and I try to use this time where this conversation is, is, is so prevalent to, to really, really pierce the hearts of people and pierce the minds that, you know, this data is profound and all of us have mothers, you know, all of us have, or someone's child and this hits everybody, it hits everybody. So um, it's a great question. It's an interesting time. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we're getting towards the end. I'm like, am I bold enough to ask one more question and like open up a whole other can of worms? Um, but I think it will. So I want to know, so I think this question is pertaining more to like college curriculum on campus. Um, and then, I mean, just in the education system in general, since um, Juan brought that up. But I'm just wondering like, what misconceptions about um, Native American and or indigenous people have you heard in um, in classrooms, if you've talked about it at all, or just um, general criticisms of the curriculum, of course, at, um, in higher education. It's pretty prevalent in archaeology. <laughs> um, it's uh, something that I, I battle day in, day out um, for from the theoretics to the overall narrative of how we interpret or how anthropologists, archaeologists interpret history, events, uh, people's identities, um, interpret artifacts. And so, so there's a whole spectrum of that that's um, part of that decolonizing sort of methodology in Native American studies. And so that is something that I kind of um, heading in that direction for um, rehabilitating um, the sort of narrative of how we interpret culture and identities um, across the spectrum. And so it's a challenge um, being uh, one, of, probably one of the only uh, Hispanic um, person that identifies as native in the program currently at Sonoma. So it's it's across through any university you can think of, like it's probably based on one or two people that are actually of color in these programs that are archaeology, anthropology. Um, it's difficult to go to, um, let's see, uh, conferences because there are no people of color who are producing this knowledge of indigeneity, um, cultural um, interpretation of landscapes and what have you. So, it's, it's a challenge having to listen through um, some of these discussions sometimes because it's like, it's super embedded in tribal cultural knowledge that it's difficult, um, um, you know, to want to hear it because it's not, people aren't being recognized in the appropriate ways. And so um, to me, it's, it's ongoing, but I mean, I myself and, Everybody here is, you know, putting in the work to um, go into different career career paths and sort of change those narratives and change those perspectives to be more inclusive. And so that's where I find myself, where I'm like a constant educator and trying to reimagine how we could be better at interpreting um, these cultural remains and um, landscapes, and even within ourselves too. Um, yeah, so actually I have an experience I can share with you. Um, my first semester here at Sonoma State, I took a choreography class and um, it, it was a beautiful class. And so we, we each made our own choreography. Um, it was my first time um, doing a traditional native dance. It was the Yaki deer dance that most males do. Um, and I decided to do it as a female. And so I presented it to the class and um, it was well received and there was you know a feedback session and there was a student who who was like Tiffany like 
that is so cool. Like um, she, <laughs> she said primitive dance really suits you. And, you know, <clears throat> good emotional, but it was definitely a hard one. You know, it was a hard one. I always felt supported by the student. So I knew not to take it personal. You know, I knew not to take it personal. Um, thank God my professor did kind of interject and, and say that that language is, is kind of racist and stuff. I reached out to her personally because, you know, I, I feel for her, you know, I feel for her. And um, she was kind of put on the spot. But nonetheless, um, it was like it was a punch to my stomach the first time that I did this dance and you know someone called it primitive um I've been a dancer for my whole life I've done ballet and modern and those are very you know European styles of dance um very white dominant and so for me to kind of have this platform and to do this dance for the first time it was you know just like I said a punch in the stomach but it made me realize like hey if you're gonna lead with this if you're gonna go into a, an, an, a sector that is dominant by, by white female dancers this is what you know you're gonna receive and so don't don't get more chips on your shoulder, Tiffany, because you have too many, <laughs> um, you know, lead with love and lead with education, you know, and I respect these dancers and I feel they respect me too. So I use that as, as my tool to communicate um, and, and to educate and I'm educating myself in, in this whole process. So that was really interesting. Um, yeah, that was, that was, that was interesting. And so, yeah, but, but the professor handled it well. And so just, you know, that's what we're doing out here. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I guess for me, um, as I started to realize that when I read, um, so I'm a psychology major. Um, so there's this saying saying that uh, the mice my, 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 my uh, pyramid of needs uh, doesn't really work for people of color. And th that's when I started to consider it. Uh, and I'm, I've am i been also called dyslexic. Uh, and I, so I've been kind of thinking about, you know, you know, how someone said that this year we've just been thinking. Um, and I came to the agreement that, um, so pretty much for me, um, my degree is all European based. I've taken a few classes, um, Filipino history and Chicano studies. That's about pretty much it. Um, but besides that, it's European based. And that was when I'm more thinking is, in, and then me going into education, uh, I'm technically still continuing that. So for me, it's kind of like a burden. Um, but one thing I've learned is that like, I need to stop basing my, my results, um, just because I've mostly been seeing results from, uh, I guess, European standards on how sh things should be. And then like, one thing for me going into college, I already knew the I came in with the mindsets, the higher up you go, the less likely you see people um, that look like you. Uh, so for me, as like, I already knew I needed to find um, not really mentors, but um, allies in a way. But luckily with Sonoma, uh, I did find people who, you know, who have the same values for me. So um, I guess for me, is just knowing that um, when it comes to, you know, being indigenous in college, uh, it's not going to be easy just because we're not going to be shown we're probably just going to have like a chapter or something so uh in a way it's just up to us as individuals to to teach uh, sadly um like in in other events it's it's not really up to us to be teaching everybody else it should be everybody else kind of learning and um i've been doing that too just because i've i've been noticing um that i am a male so i do come with privileges uh so in a way i just been in a way, healing myself just because um, I've done damage to my community too. So it's um, in a way just learning to to know that we have a long way to go. Uh, and I hope that one day is just um, that indigenous is just who we are. Um, I, I don't know, I got lost in my thoughts. So.
And just, I guess, one more thing. Um, yeah, I'm a theater major. And so I definitely um, have a lot of these conversations in the theater and humanities program, um, land acknowledgement for one. Um, however, I like in, in the different departments, I, I have biology courses and things like that. So in science, like in STEM, um, I know in those in that area, it's really, really not talked about and acknowledging even land or anything. And I would love to see, um, you know, in, in uncovering our history, you know, we, we are are biologists, we are mathematicians, and we do have really analytical minds as well. And so I would, I think just in, in my mind, I would love to see, you know, curriculum that embraces that as well, because even like our way of science, like Alvin was saying, is very European. You know, we, we have, we come with a lot of history of, of being biologists as natives here. Um, and so I, I, that's just something I would like to see across the departments, especially in STEM as well. And I think one more for the land acknowledgement. I, I love doing that. I, I think it's so great. And as indigenous person, however, we, we do not want people to feel separate. We don't want people to feel like this is the, not their land because we do want them to be stewards of the land that we share too. And so um, I would love to see more things like that, but just more in conversation versus just like, you know, rituals, I guess, you know. Yeah, you bring up a very key point there, Tiffany, with, um... Yeah, to be have it talked about naturally as opposed to like a script that have someone has to constantly say it because, oh, because we have to say it. Uh, it, it it's more meaningful to have a public discussion about these sort of things. Um, and it, it's, it, yeah, it's um, one of the things I wanted to add on to what Juan was saying um, is that, you know, with the when we tell people that we're indigenous, and I'm sure Tiffany can speak to this, like people expect you to be indigenous, Indian, all these terms for them to, to, to validate that concept of who you are as a native person. They want to see you in your regalia to identify you as being native. So I, I just think that we still live in that era um, yeah, exactly. Play the Indians, like, uh, show me how you're native. And I'm like, we're just people <laughs> in, in careers that, you know, are, 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 are challenged by who we are as, as people. And, and that's, you know, we're constantly uh, having to fight that out every day. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for being here and for sharing all these intimate parts of yourselves and for um, your honesty and openness. We really appreciate it. It's really a privilege to have you here. Tori, did you want to ask any more questions or should we open it up for the participants? Yeah, a Q&A is like perfect. I was just going to go into that. So thank you. Um, if anyone wants to ask any questions, um, feel free to unmute or put it in the chat. Oh, um, yeah, go for it. First of all, I am so, I mean, I'm good. I'm a little, I'm a little uh, emotional. I am so, um, I feel so privileged to be with all of you and the honesty that you have just shared with us has been so incredibly moving. And I didn't expect to get a little choked up, um, but I am. And um, partially it's because of, um, the fact that I've spent um, my entire career working with indigenous tribes in Mexico and documenting their language with communities and training community members to document their language and empowering them to preserve their own cultures this way. And the piece that's been missing and what we've all been trying to do uh, as the community that I worked with was to get this stuff online for the diaspora. And I've never really worked with um, folks who are not down there. And hearing now how important that is to have that history for your identities to be fulfilled in a way that, you know, perhaps um, in, in, you know, to, to enrich it, essentially. I just think that there's a lot of work that we can do at Sonoma State. I'm thrilled to be here, um, especially, again, with, with people like you. 
So that's one piece. And I just wanted to thank you for that because I think there's so much work that we can do together with anthropology. Um, I'm, the, I'm the Dean of the School of Social Sciences. So um, I'm thrilled to have this connection with arts and humanities as well. The other piece that is um, emotional in a different way, it's not gonna make me cry, it makes me a little bit mad, is the piece that Alvin brought up about the whiteness of anthropology. And I see that in, um, in, uh, in, in linguistics as well, which is, which is my trade. And I think we have to do, and there's ways to do it, and we, I'm sure we all have ideas of how we can do it, but we need to do it together, is to recruit more students into these fields so that they own this, that it is not being sort of done for anybody, but that there's more ownership of it. And so Alvin, I'm thrilled to see you there. And I wanna, I wanna know how we can do that more because the only way we can get faculty of color in these fields is if we have students of color in these fields. So I am again, I'm a partner with that and would love to have uh, future conversations uh, with anybody who's interested in how we can promote that more. So there are comments more than questions. I would love to set up another time where we all sit around and drink coffee and, and tell stories. But um, I, I and, and I mean that seriously, but I did wanna thank you and, and just I'm thrilled to be here. So thank you. Yeah, if I might add some comment back on that, uh, Corey. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's a very interesting time. And, and I, I think a step in the right direction is what um, Erica, yourself, and everybody has kind of put together with these sort of discussions. Um, I know I was shocked to learn um, that Sonoma State held its first Native American uh, month. Um, and so, you know, especially if we're cranking out, <laughs> there's more more of a comment and slight criticism of, of the program in the sense where we're cranking out a lot of uh, cultural resource management applied people, but not enough people in the training backgrounds to engage Native American communities to work that we're constantly having to be out there working with all the time. So it's, it's interesting and it is a, a, a conversation for a separate time, but no, definitely I think the forum of, of these types of gatherings, I, it's, it's beautiful in the sense that it brings to light different conversations to carry on forward. And I think that's a big part of it, really. Thank you. If Jermaine, do you have a question? I had more of a comment. I had been listening during this experience and I just wanna say, Thank you so much for holding this space and I appreciate it being here. I'm here, I'm representing the Office of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. Our office was formed last summer. And so I'm excited to be here and to see these types of programs happen. Um, I just wanted to do a quick shameless plug for the Campus Climate Survey. Um, I'm sure you've seen emails about it. And I think this conversation is exactly the kind of information that we wanna capture in that survey. So if you have about 15, 20 minutes, please feel free to check your email, take that survey. It's gonna be sent from a company called Viewfinder. And once you take the survey, it should take about like 15 minutes. You also have a chance to enter into a raffle to win a Fitbit or a Surface laptop. So I just wanted to just say that. Um, I just wanted to um, just quickly say again, I, um, I actually I had some tears happening um, that was actually just around um, just appreciation from a few things. I think each one of you four panelists and, and facilitator said something that um, uh, hit me, um, including just Tori welcoming everyone and saying, you know, your presence is enough and, um, and, and doing that in that inviting kind of way, um, right, uh, is just, um, I think that that's something um, that our Native American Indigenous students, right, but also, um, right, um, uh, all students, um, faculty, staff, right? This is something that Tori has heard um, myself and our uh, sort of co-coordinators talk about as women of color, um, even in, in our faculty positions, right? Of just like being enough, right? Being enough. And uh, I just really appreciate that. And, and Tiffany, your um, ability to experience empathy, um, empathy in a moment of hurt, um, you know, that's, 
powerful. Um, Arturo, um, your conversation about your name um, and that honoring um, hit me in a few different ways. And Alvin, um, you know, your presence and what you're doing and connecting, um, not just being right um, in CRM, but connecting with us here. You have been um, such a familiar face from, from Native American Heritage Month to ongoing um, the fire series. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to us connecting and, you know, the work that I've been asked to do, it's only possible because of all of you. Um, so they should really call it facilitator of Native American studies because I'm not directing anything, <laughs> right? Um, it's just, um, it's an honor to be um, a facilitator um, for programs and spaces um, where you all can come forward and speak and be the knowledge producers. So I just wanted to say that and, and I did slip my email into the chat just to um, uh, invite you all. Everyone is welcome to our reading group, whether you read the book or not. Sometimes we we do um, devolve or evolve into simply a check-in and chat group, um, but all are welcome in that. And thank you all, the organizers and everyone, and, and Tori especially for putting this together. Thank you so much, Dr. Tom. That does bring us to the end of our indigeneity with Beyond Borders Social Justice Week 2021 session today. And I really wanna take a moment to just extend my gratitude to all of you and to echo everything that you all have said. I'm very moved by what you've all shared with us today. And I am honored to be in the social justice organizing class to have been exposed to this amazing week long events in my final semester at Sonoma State University. And I'd like to take up Dean Troy on that offer to get together and have coffee and sit down and talk more about these important issues and how we can improve the representation of our indigenous communities in higher education as students and as educators. So um, I wanna thank Dr. Erica Tom, Tori, um, Arturo, Alvin, Tiffany, our panel that spoke with us today, our Professor Henry for um, leading us as student organizers to bring social justice to Sonoma State University, our host, Lindsay. And yes, I look forward to learning more and thank you so much for being here today. And please join us tomorrow to recognize um, our panelists with awards. I just dropped the awards information in the chat and that will be at seven o'clock tomorrow, hopefully depending on the awardees schedules. And in order to keep our funding and improve things, we would appreciate your feedback in a survey that I also dropped in the chat link. And we're also hiring if any students want to work on Social Justice Week, we have some funding available um, for the next few weeks in the semester. So um, you can get in contact with us if you'd like to uh, help out with this and get paid to do it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having us. I appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.